How would you like to get faster in your reflexes, make better decisions in less time, sharpen your focus, and enhance your fine motor skills, all by doing a few minutes of this special breathing exercise? This isn't just subjective feelings either, because what I'm about to tell you comes from scientific research on the breath of fire, or Kapalabhati Pranayama, which is otherwise known as the shining skull breath. And you've got to love the name, if nothing else, because it could sound like it would be a death metal band. The Breath of Fire was first written down in the 15th century Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which is a classic text on medieval yoga practices. It is a fast breathing exercise done with sharp, strong exhalations, followed by passive inhalations. Kapalabhati is also known as a method of purification, often done as a warm-up before other breath practices, especially breath holding because it reduces the urge to breathe for a little while. It's also great in the middle of a yoga practice to help you energize and work on your core muscles. Kapalabhati is a combination of two words, kapala, which means skull, and abhati, which means to shine. And the yogis were certainly onto something because just a few minutes of this practice does indeed shine your skull or it brightens up your brain and your perceptions. And neuroscientific studies show that indeed this practice does affect the brain and perception in some really remarkable and useful ways. Let's take a look at four of these. Number one, the breath of fire reduces optical illusion. When you read yoga texts, they often describe how when a person achieves the state of yoga or union, that they're able to see the world with less distortion, less of their own bias, and you can see reality more clearly. And interestingly enough, scientists took this metaphor quite literally. They had subjects first do a few rounds of Kapalabhati, and then they opened their eyes to gaze at this optical illusion called the molar liar illusion. This is this optical illusion with three stylized arrows, and you're supposed to put a mark on the line where you think is the middle. Without the breathing exercises, subjects would consistently misjudge the length of the line, but after a few minutes of this rapid breathing exercise, they would get it right. So it is actually true. A yogic technique does literally help you to cut through illusion and see reality more clearly. Interesting, isn't it? Number two, the breath of fire reduces visual reaction time. Another study found that doing Kapalabhati could make subjects react quicker to detecting differences in light color. Researchers took 60 subjects, they tested their visual reaction time for red and green light, and then split them into two groups. One group practiced a sequence of eye exercises in Kapalabhati for eight weeks. The control group just went about their regular life. When they came back after eight weeks, they tested again, and the Kapalabhati practicing group showed a much faster visual reaction time. Number three, the breath of fire improves dexterity. The next study took 140 subjects, and they measured their performance on the O'Connor finger dexterity test, where you have to fill small holes with precisely three pins over and over. You get measured on how fast you can do it and how accurate you are. It's a test to assess how quickly someone can manipulate small objects, like what would you would need if you were going to be doing certain kinds of assembly line work. Then they split the group into two. Half of them were taught to simply observe their breath, and half were taught Kapalabhati. The results were pretty impressive. The ones who did Kapalabhati were 19% more dexterous and 59% more accurate. The breath awareness group actually had no improvement. So in case you're setting out to do something which requires nimble work with your fingers, do a few rounds of Kapalabhati first. Number four. The breath of fire speeds up perception. To measure a person's speed of attention, neuroscientists look for a spike in a brain signal that they call the P300, which is called as such because it spikes 300 milliseconds after a person gets some new or unusual input, like a sudden strange sound or an out-of-place visual. 
like that. See what I did there? If we had you hooked up to an EEG, then there would have been a spike in the P300 signal coming from your brain. Versions of this test are used to study brain health during comas. If a person has a P300 response, then they may have a chance of improved recovery. Now, they took this group of people and they tested their baseline P300 response. Then they split the group into two. One group practiced Kapalabhati and the other group practiced simply doing breath awareness. And they found that both practices actually influenced the P300. Where breath awareness increased the P300 peak amplitude, which suggests that this practice of breath awareness brings more brain resources available for perception of new stimuli, while Kapalabhati reduces the peak latency of the P300 wave, which means that the brain is going to be faster to pick up changes in your perception. So now you know that anytime that you need to focus or to study, you wanna do some breath of fire first and you will have an edge. So there you have it. You probably know more about the breath of fire now than your yoga teachers do. If you did learn something new from this video and if you could click like and subscribe because that will help this channel grow. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next video.